It's a beautiful morning here in Flagstaff. It's 6.30 a.m. right now. It's a little chilly. It's like 50 degrees out, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, took a cold shower already, so we're ready to go. And yeah, so I want to start off by answering one of the most popular questions I've been getting on Instagram, and that is, how do I edit my photos? How do I do my videos? So let's dive right into it. Woo! So here's the secret. So this is my little guy. This is the Fujifilm XT30 Mark II. I, I love this little thing. You know, 10, 10 recommend. It's a digital camera, but it's got like these little like film simulations um, in them, is, which is really pretty much like, you know, built-in presets. Obviously, I tweak the settings in there to make them look even better. And then I got this Pro Mist filter on the front. It just gives it a little bit more of that, you know, dreamy vibe. I don't, I honestly don't even edit my photos. I just do everything in the camera with the settings and um, the exposure. And yeah, even some of the, you know, my most recent reels have been shot on this. This camera is awesome. And regarding on um, how do I edit my videos, I do everything uh, on a Mac. I use uh, Final Cut Pro. I do the cuts, but um, you know all the coloring and all that stuff. You know, comes you know straight from this little guy. But yeah, that's about it. All right, we made it we downtown made it. Flagstaff. It's a cool little downtown, so we're gonna go check it around. All right, ciao. All right, everybody, it's time for Q&A time. We're gonna answer, you know, the questions you guys asked us on Instagram. You got a first question? Okay. Will you rewatch season five? Will we rewatch season five? That's um, season. Oh yeah, that is. <laughs> we did watch like one or two episodes at her house back home in Wisconsin with her parents. But it was a little bit embarrassing, especially like watching those beach huts. No, I was like, I was like covering up in blankets. We both had like our ears covered and our eyes covered. It was just a little awkward. Yeah. Seeing yourself on TV for the first time and like listening to like how you sound and like how you look, it's it's a little like embarrassing, but we'll get over that. We watched the Lava Challenge and then we watched um, the first episode. So first episode, which none of us were in there yet. And um, there's a lot of stuff we do want to see. Like, I feel like there's nice moments between us that, like, yeah. would be cute to watch back. We but definitely, also a little cringy. I don't know. Yeah, no, we definitely want to watch, like, the recoupling for sure. Like, I came back from Casa. Um, that's one of the ones that it's on top of our list. But I think eventually we'll get, you know, we'll watch the whole season. But uh, I think we're going to take it slow for right Maybe now. Maybe we should start. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A couple more weeks. Next question. What was your favorite challenge? My favorite challenge? I have a top three. I have the <laughs> lava quarterback and uh, the food one. The food one was really cool. The food fight at the end was awesome. So I don't know. I think it's a tie between those three. But yeah, what about you? I liked the lava lava challenge. Yeah. I thought that one was fun and it was so lighthearted and it was just also like fun to watch all the other couples go like it was actually entertaining to watch all of them do mm -hmm. their turn just as much as it was fun for like us to do yeah. and that was our first challenge together and we won that was yeah so, I just okay. that's so maybe favorite. maybe that one will go on top of, our, of my list when did you know kenzo was the one you were so cute together were you surprised that you actually found love with kenzo i was surprised that i actually had a relationship that like i actually saw a future with I figured if anything, it might be like a fun little fling, like you don't know where it's gonna go when you leave. But the fact before we even left, we already knew like we had this whole future together. Caught me off guard, it was crazy. But also he's just so lovable. Like when he came in, he was everything I wanted and more. So I feel like it was good. Thanks, Mila. You're welcome. What were your initial reactions or thoughts walking into the villa? At first, like, there was so much going on. I think as soon as I walked in, like, we went straight into, like, boys chat and then a girls chat and then a challenge. And it was just so much going on that, like, my head was fucking racing like crazy. And I didn't, honestly didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know what to say. But, yeah, it was a lot to take in. But it was cool. It was cool seeing everybody. Before even going in, um, I was able to watch on an iPad a few of the episodes. And so just, like, seeing them in person, 
it was so cool. Like, you know, it was almost like, you know, meeting celebrities. I was like, whoa, I'm actually here. And then like just getting to know everybody in person, like it's just a whole different thing than just watching them on an iPad and seeing how they're perceived on, on, on the show. You know, some people are completely different and like in person. And so that was really cool. And obviously like when I first saw you, um, I was like, fuck, like, She's even prettier, you know, in person. And, and so I was really excited to get to know her. I, I think that's why, you know, I pulled it for, for the first chat. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of, you know, started falling for her right away. And so. My first thoughts were when I first started interviewing for this show, I was under the impression that, like, if I went on the show, I was going to be Akasa Amor girl. So I ended up coming to Fiji like way earlier than I had thought because they told me I was probably going to be a bombshell because I interviewed for this show so late. Then the day of when I found out I was going in the very first night, I was kind of excited that I was going in as a bombshell. Like I feel like that's such like a fun and cool moment. Like if you like the show, like I feel like the first bombshells coming in is such an iconic moment because it's the first shakeup in the villa. So to be able to do that, like as a fan of the show, I thought was really exciting. Mm -hmm. And it was also really nice to go in with Hannah and have like a support system and someone there you could talk to and kind of rely on. And I feel like her and I really bonded over that shared experience. So I really liked it. And it was nice that like we got to know the guys. We didn't have to pick anyone off of like physical first impressions too. So it was exciting. Yeah, no, that definitely helped a lot coming in with someone else. I came in with Jonah and, and Emily. They're really cool people. And so, like, you know, after, like, we would, you know, chat with, with the people we were interested in, then we would, like, you know, huddle up with me, Jonah, and Emily, and then we would just talk about, like, how everything's going, if they have any advice. And so that helped a lot, for sure. What is something that wasn't aired that you wish was shown? I have two things that I wish was shown. One, right before Casa Amor, I was, like, trying all, the ri all of your rings on and you told me I could keep one. So I wore it the whole time I was in Casa Amor and like I would be like playing with his rings. And I said if he recoupled at the Casa Amor ceremony, I was gonna throw his ring at him. But like I thought it was such a special moment to me. But I literally wear it every day. It's underneath one of my rings so that it stays on just cause it's bigger. But I loved that. I thought that was so nice. And then I feel like the other thing that I wish was shown during the paddle challenge because I've seen clips of it on TikTok. America voted and then we had to vote who we thought. In the challenge it said that everyone voted you most boring mm -hmm. but I didn't and then I kind of like defended you and stood up for you and then you ran over and gave me like a big kiss and I feel like that was the first time that I like really shared how much I liked you and like how much you meant to me mm -hmm. and it just was like such a special moment like I wanted to watch it back so then when I saw the clip on TikTok and it wasn't there that made me sad. Do you miss the villa? I honestly kind of do now. Um, <laughs> you know, like, it was just really cool being around all those people. Like, you know, that you know they're family to me now. And so it just felt like, you know, a huge, like, you know, summer sleepover with your brothers and sisters. And luckily, I, I'm still with her. But I do miss a lot of the guys and, and even the girls out there and, like, their energy and just, like, just the way they would wake up and start making jokes. And, like, we would cook, you know, even though I didn't eat breakfast, but, you know, I would just sit around and watch them, you know, cook <laughs> breakfast. And I miss those times, yeah, yeah for sure. And, and, you know, just being out, you know, in Fiji, out by the beach, it was a really cool experience. And, and it's starting to hit me, you know, it's starting to hit me. And we've been doing a lot since since after that. And so I've been having a lot of fun still and, and everything, but I do, I do miss a lot of the guys. I feel like I don't miss it so much in the sense that the only part I do miss is I feel like since we've left the villa, everyone's been so busy. Like I know I'm not good at answering my texts and like I feel like when we all talk to each other, like there is like a little bit of like a delay. You kind of have to call each other. It's just, I definitely miss everyone so much, but, and it was nice to kind of like have no worries while we were in there. But also I feel like I really struggled with just like being around people so often just cause I'm so introverted. Like it's nice to have my alone time back. I feel like I really struggled and was like mentally struggling with that when I was in the villa. So not having that be a concern anymore is nice, but I do miss like all my friends so much. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Did you think Kenza was also sleeping outside slash alone while you were at Casa Amor? So right before we went to Casa Amor, 
I don't know if this was shown or not, but we had like a quick conversation of like, oh, if Casa Amor happens, like. We didn't know when Casa Amor was gonna happen, but like for some reason, like we had like a conversation every, yeah. like a few hours before it. Like we were like, hey, just in case this happens. We just established that like we weren't gonna kiss anyone outside of challenges. Like we thought that would be disrespectful. And then it was kind of like up in the air and the conversation kind of wrapped up with him. Like we both kind of said like, okay, like, you just got here because he'd only been there for like a week at that point so we were like okay like maybe we should like be open in Casa more like you haven't gotten the like opportunity to meet that many people yet and then I think we regretted saying that like it's because literally hours later Casa more happened and I both of us were like why the fuck did we say that we should have just said we were closed off yeah but then it did like kind of put pressure on me to be like okay like if he's gonna get to know people then I sh it was that conversation, as much as like it sucked and I think we wish we had closed off, like it was so exciting to come back and see each other and it meant more. But oh, back to the actual question. At the end of that conversation, we like got up and we were walking away and you said, and he'd been asking me to sleep outside for like days and I kept being like joking and being like, we have to wait for like the weather to be really nice. And so you said something like, if Casa Amor happens, like, at least I'll be able to sleep outside alone every night. And then we, like, laughed. So, because we were just joking around. But then when Casa Amor happened, like, I knew he meant it as much as it was, like, a joke. And so then I was like, well, I don't want to disrespect my partner. and I don't want to sleep with someone that's not him. And knowing that, like, he would do that for me, I wanted to do it for him. Because he knows how much I hate sleeping outside. So I wanted to, like, prove that to him. And like back to when we had that conversation like and we decided to leave the, the gap in the door a little bit open as soon as like we found out about Casa more I was like fuck I should have you know we should have closed things off but you know I'm kind of glad we didn't because like I feel like this way it really like made sure that we really wanted each other you know um, you know even though we didn't close things off like right away when I heard it was Casa more time and the girls were gone I was like, dude, like, my doors are closed. Like, I, I don't even have to tell her that. Um, like, my doors are closed no matter who walks through that door. Like, I'm not going to turn my head for anyone. And and so, I, you know, I wanted to stay true to that. And, and, you know, like, as soon as she left, I missed her like crazy. And so that's when I knew, like, sh this was real. Like, she was the one uh, for me. And, and then, yeah, the sleeping outside, was a, it was another question, you know. Like, I... You know, I love sleeping outside, so I, I was kind of waiting for this moment. I was like, it, it was like one of the only like good things, you know, that happened to me during Casa More. I was just got to sleep outside every day. You know, me and Marco's relationship grew a lot in there too, especially because Marco was doing the same thing as me, you know, we were being loyal and didn't really want to talk to anyone. You know, we made that little song for them, which I thought it was kind of, it was kind of cool. As much as it sucked, you know, there was a few good moments in there. Why did you say you were a slow burner to Bergie but started dating Kenzo a weekend? So I got called out for saying slow burn like a million times. My dad told me they turned it into a drinking game every time I said slow burn. I typically am. Like it usually takes me a long time to develop feelings. I'm very, very guarded. I question every little thing. I question every intention. It was, it's not just a Bergie thing. It's like a life thing. And when Kenzo came in, literally like KK, Hannah, like Keenan, Leo, Cassie, all of them were like, oh, they would just come up to me like, oh my God, you haven't stopped smiling. You're so giddy. Like it just, I was like so caught off guard by how much I liked him. I literally was like a giddy schoolgirl, and I couldn't help but show it. Like Keenan would literally be like, I've never seen you smile this much like ever. Like in one day, I'd been like smiling more with Kenzo around than I had been like my whole first 10 days there. So it was just like, it wasn't even something that I felt. It was things like even the other Islanders noticed. They were like, holy shit, like Carmen's got a crush. Like I was just so caught off guard by how much I liked him. It wasn't that I'm not a slow burner. I think even Leo was like, it just shows how much you like Kenzo. Like he was like, I really think you like him because you're moving differently than you ever have before. So I think it just goes to show how much I like you, Bubba. Mm. Who were you closest to in the villa, guys and girls? I could probably say five of them, like no order, you know, Leo, Harrison, Marco, 
Keenan, Bergy, probably missing someone, but those are the guys that, you know, I was around every single day in Jonah, you know, my bombshell brother that came in with me. And so, you know, th there's a lot of them, you know, I got along with every single one and, and everybody was super close and yeah, I miss them like crazy already. I honestly couldn't pick one. It's a whole lot of them. And girl wise, Cassie, you know, we had a running joke cause her, um, her mom's name is the same as my mom, Floor. We became kind of close at, towards the end, you know, we would call each other brother and sister. And you really stood up for her during Casa Amor too, and I feel like that meant a lot to her that you were like trying to defend her while she was gone. Mm -hmm. And you like tried to like help Leah out a little bit, so I feel like that, like that support from you. So I feel like after that was when you guys initially got really close. Her and then I think um, Johnny a little bit, like we're very spiritual people and you know, we like to talk about the universe and all these different things about energy and everything like that. And, and she's really big into that. And so, you know, I told her we could be good friends and, and you know, the rest of the time, you know, that's what we pretty much talked about. And so it was cool. I feel like for girls, I mean, me and Cassie did like the whole, her and I got really, really close and really relied on each other. Like mentally, we spent like a lot of our like, whenever we weren't off for chats, like you could find like me and Cassie like cuddled on a day bed together, like from day one to the last day, we were just really close. So I feel like her, and then I was really close with KK. Her leaving was really hard. Emily, like we got really close the last couple days she was there. I feel like she was there for such a short amount of time, it made me so sad because she just has the best energy. She's the baddest bitch I know and she's just like, She's just so fun. Like, I feel like sometimes things in there could get so serious and you could go to her for like a fun time. The Casa Amor girls, like both Taylors and Johnny, I got really close with all three of them. So yeah, it was good. Or like me and Hannah, like we were bombshell buddies. We came in day one together. So her and I are bonded for life for that. But yeah, no, it was just like, everyone in there was so incredible and I had such good relationships with each of them. For guys, I got really close with Leo and Keenan from day one. Them were like who I really relied on if I needed like support from them. Or like definitely Kyle's, like my Casa Amor Bob. Like he was the best. Um, him and I definitely kept each other sane in Casa Amor and would chill and just talk about whatever. Or Eddie, like I was so sad when Eddie didn't get to come back. Rob was chill too. Like Rob and Kyle were so close. So like we would all just kind of like sit around and play games. So. All the guys were really, really great. No, every, everybody's really cool. It's, it's hard to choose. Like, you know, everybody got along pretty well. So yeah, it, it, I think it was a really good cast. You know, hopefully we're all gonna meet up pretty soon and have a good time again. How are you and Kenzo since the show ended? Where do you guys stand? Together. <laughs> we're good. We're still together. <laughs> <laughs> we're really good. We're currently in Flax off right now. We took a little, you know, getaway, two hours away from home up in the mountains. Uh, we wanna be you know, by nature a little bit, have some peace, you know, slowly, slowly go back into our, you know, normal life. She met my family in San Diego and then I met her family in, in Wisconsin and we had a really good time and yeah, things are going good. really good. We have like a lot of trips and like future plans in the works in like the next couple months that we're excited for, but also it's just been nice to like date in the real world and like we go to the movies together, we go on walks in the morning, just like little things like that. I feel like have been really nice and been so special. I feel like we were so boring and so chill in the villa because we were just like dating and getting to know each other and that's kind of just carried in. We kind of just, you know, did our own thing. Yeah, we didn't really have anything come up and like really shake us up. The only thing was like that, that little <laughs> challenge, but we got over it quick. So what made you become interested in joining the show and how was the process? This summer I was supposed to go backpacking in Europe as like a graduation present to myself. I wanted, I've never been to Europe, so I was gonna go backpacking. For two whole months, I was gonna go for July and August, and I was supposed to go with a couple other people, and the last week of May, the trip just like fell through. It became such a roller coaster, and it just like wasn't really gonna be feasible anymore. So I remember calling my mom and my aunt, my cousin, and being like, what am I gonna do? I have two months off of work. like." Should I just go somewhere? Like, should I come home? It was very like, I just didn't know what to do. I was like, maybe I'll remove my like time off and I'll just stay and work for the summer, whatever. Um, and literally the next day I got messaged and the casting producer that messaged me was like, this is really random and very last minute, but would you happen to be free for the months of July and August? And I responded and was like, I'm actually 100% free, like I'm not even kidding. I was like, I'm off of work 
and she said that she was casting for Love Island and the casting process was closing the next day. So she asked if I could meet her the next morning. So it all happened very last minute, but just the timing of things and the way that I had already had off of work, I was supposed to be somewhere else, and all of this came together. It just felt like I had to go. I remember during my first interview, she was talking to me and I told her, and she was like, why do you wanna go on Love Island? I was like, because I'm supposed to go. I was like, if this is not like fate aligning and working out that I'm supposed to be there, I don't know what else is. So to be honest, I was not interested at all. I got reached out maybe, I don't know, February, March of this year. And I've never seen any reality shows, you know, cause my family does, my brother and my mom. But you know, I would watch them and you know, I would see people, you know, crying and fall in love so fast, you know, I was like, dude, you just, just met, like, how, how is this happening? And so I, I was never interested and kind of ignored the message. I was like, there's no way I could, I could do this, but, and then I got reached out again, like two weeks later. And I was like, hmm, I was like, what, what is this show? And I started thinking about it and re doing research on it. Um, I asked my brother about it and my brother watches it with his girlfriend. And so they were like, oh, it's a great show. Like you, you should go on it. Like you'll be good on it. And so, you know, I don't know why, like, like she said, like, just felt right. Like, it just felt like something, you know, was kind of guiding me towards that show. And I was like, all right, screw it. You know, like it wasn't a for sure. Like I had still had to go through the process and, and do all these interviews and all that stuff. So I decided to do that. And, you know, I took it one step at a time and, you know, every, every interview, it was, it was fun. You know, there were fun interviews with the, with the casting directors and everything like that. And uh, they're really cool people. And so, so I was like, all right, yeah, let's do this. I kind of had to take a risk. I, you know, I canceled all my travel plans and, you know, luckily it paid off. Um, you know, I'm very grateful for this opportunity and this experience. I never, you know, thought going into a reality TV show, you know, I would fall in love and, and meet someone like her. And so yeah, it's, it was a really cool experience and I'll remember this for the rest of my life and really, really glad, you know, I took, I took on this opportunity. So what did you make of people who thought you and Kenzo knew each other before Love Island? This is the big one. <laughs> yeah, it was honestly, you know, kind of crazy, you know. We, we were confused when we, we weren't, yeah, we weren't expecting, you know, these rumors. It would just be crazy if we like did know each other. Like, it's just not possible with it, how many yeah. people audition. And you don't go know in. if you're going in, like even the timing of everything. And like, why, if you're dating someone, like why would you want to go in there and like watch them, like, you know, make out with other people. But no, you know, you know, you know. You know, like it, it wasn't true. I was working out at 7 or 8 a.m. I usually never go in the mornings. I try to go, you know, at like 11 or 12. And yeah, so I guess it was it was the same gym. Yeah, we never, you never, we never crossed paths. I only worked um, out there for three months. I've like moved gyms so many times just from, I had a trainer that moved and then I moved and then I was in school and then I found, so I wasn't consistently like working out there or anything. And I think it was a big thing where like, it said that I followed him on Instagram, but my friend running my account had followed him when he After we, came like, on the show and yeah. we coupled up. So she did that, but it became a whole thing. And then also on the show, him and I went off for a chat where we were talking about like, oh my God, like this feels like fate. Like what are the odds we're both like, we both lived in Scottsdale and we've never met. And the big thing was like, I moved to Scottsdale in May. I've been living in like South Tempe for all of college. So I was in college full time and I just moved to Scottsdale. But we had a full conversation where we were talking about like, oh, we both worked out at that gym at one point. Like, that's crazy. Like we were so shocked by that. And you know, I guess that conversation never made it to air. Mm -hmm. So it just didn't come out. Making mac and cheese and chicken. Not anymore. <laughs> Look! Ah! Woo! Can I go first? Carmen, mi amor, the moment I laid eyes on you, it felt like I was at the right place at the right time. Our first conversation at all the fields literally had me catching all of them for you. I knew I loved you the night you left for Casa Amor. 
Because when I realized you were gone, so was my heart. When the recoupling came and you walked into the villa alone, it was the best feeling I have ever felt. And it was clear to me that you were the one. Carmen, Elizabeth, Kazurik. It was always and it will always be you. Damn. Salud to a new YouTube channel, baby. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed my first episode of my YouTube journey, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. There's a lot more coming and you're not going to want to miss it. I love y'all. See you on the next one. Peace.